Okay, so in this lesson we're going to learn how to do this effect. Hey, I'm gonna take a picture, so pretend like you're going to flick the tower, right? Hold on. Hold. <laughs> We've got a few things going on, but it's mostly simple as that. We need to track the footage, we need the clean plate, we need to isolate our subject, and we need to animate it. And this is it. Let's jump into the After Effects and see how it's done. Okay, we have our video. I'm going to pre-compose that because it's a 4K footage and we don't need that size for now. So this is what our shot looks like. My wife pretends to flick the tower, then we run away. Pretty simple. Let's pick the frame where it's best visible. Because what we want to do right now is to take a screenshot, erase the tower and have sky only, so our clean plate, have the tower separated, so our subject, and then it all tracked and attached to our footage. So let's take a screenshot first. I'm going to use the FX console, take a screenshot, save it as a PNG, and then open it in the Photoshop. So I'm not going to go step by step on how to use the Photoshop. Uh, I think we're gonna have a separate lesson on that. So let's time lapse this a little bit. Okay, we have a clean plate. Now let's isolate the tower. Okay, now we can save that file and bring it to After Effects. In After Effects, you double click it, point it to your file, click open, select editable layer styles, and there you go, you have your footage. Let's add the marker so we know exactly where our screenshot was. To do that, press the star on your keyboard or click, hold and bring the marker in. Now let's track the footage. I'm going to choose Mocha. Open up, we're at the frame 219, it's worth remembering, and let's create a plane to track. Let's include a little more, and let's check all the track motion options. Let's track back, it's going to lose it at some point, but it doesn't matter. So it lost the track here, but we don't care about that, because I think we will replace it somewhere around here but let's track forward from here. And it lost it again, doesn't matter, we're good. Before we close it, make sure to be on frame 219, so our screenshot frame and click align surface. Because as you already know, we have to stretch the surface to corners of our composition. Now save it. Now let's create track data. Let's bring our clean plate which we have to mask out. Maybe let's turn down the opacity. First, let's hide the mask. Let's use mask expansion just a little bit and feather it out six pixels. I don't think there's anything left visible. That's good. And let's bring our tower. Okay, let's pre-compose that all separately, of course. Let's call it tower. Now from our corner pin data, choose the tower, apply export. Now choose the clean plate and apply export again. Let's find the moment that we know our track was lost. So I think right about here, use alt and open square brackets to trim the layer. Now let's check after, it was lost right here. Alt, close square brackets. Okay, so let's see how it looks like right now. Boom, okay, good. So now the fun part. Let's see where she flicks. It will be right about here, yep. So let's select our tower, create the puppet position pin tool, add few pins to the base to make sure this won't move 
at the Puppet Band tool, I say about four pins will be just about right. And now we have the trick that I already showed you. So let's use expressions to connect these pins. So Puppet Pin 11 pointed to rotation down below, click away, pointed to the one below. And now if we bend it, the whole thing moves. So one more tweak. Let's double click E to show expressions. And with each and every one of them, let's add times 1.5. So what that did is if I bend my bottom tool, the top ones bend a little more. So that's awesome. So let's animate our pin. So I think it was eight. Yes. So we have our first keyframe. Go a few frames forward. Let's say six. Bend it to minus 20 degrees. Go a few frames forward. Let's say 10. Few frames forward. Minus five. two, and finally zero. So let's make the middle ones easy ease, click F9. Let's make this one easy ease out, so command shift F9, and this one easy ease in, so shift F9, and let's see how it looks. Quite cool, maybe we can lengthen the whole animation just a little bit. Select all of the keyframes, press Alt, hold it, and we can stretch the whole animation. Yeah, that looks better to me. So we have one more issue. When that tower is coming back, it's overlapping her finger. So let's duplicate our footage, put it on top. Let's call it finger. And we need to isolate the finger. I think the simplest way is to do it with mask. Let's set it to full and let's create a mask around the finger. Click the stopwatch and let's animate it frame by frame, unfortunately, but it's only for a few frames, so that's always good. I think we're done animating. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, we need to refine the mask a little more. So let's open up all the options. Let's hide the mask. And first of all, we need to feather it, maybe like four pixels. And we need to bring it back inside just a little bit. Turn down the feather even more to let's say one and a half pixels. So let's see how it looks like in a normal view. There's slight flash of bright pixels somewhere around, the, yeah, right here. So maybe let's animate the expansion. Up before that is fine. Now let's, I think now it will look good. So again, fit it and see how it looks. Yeah, that looks really good to me. Okay, so basic effect is practically done. So there are a few minor tweaks. So first, let's examine the transition between our footage and our screenshot, if there's any difference. I really don't see any, to be honest. It's perfectly smooth. Quite happy with that. Okay, so since our transition between footage and the screenshot is basically unnoticeable, I'm just going to do this for the sake of tutorial. So if we had any change, I would animate the opacity. So let's do an opacity keyframe 100% right here. Let's bring it back to zero here. And we'd have to animate the opacity of our clean plate as well, but with a slight shift. So right about here would be 100%, but right where we have our 100% tower opacity, we would then only start to animate the clean plate. And as you can see, there's literally no difference. Perfect. So what we do know about our footage is we don't have any noise and we know that because it's a screenshot. So obviously originally the footage had some noise, so we would have to remove the original grain. So let's remove grain on our tower. Let's see if we have any difference. 
Yeah, it's really too low res to notice anything. But we have the slightest change. If it was any bigger, we would notice it a little bit more. But just to show you, we use the remove grain and then we can add some noise. I like about 4, 3%. Nah, that's way too much here. Let's use maybe two. We could use some blur before that, but I don't think any is necessary. It's color matched. So let's see how it looks right now. Awesome. So the basics are done. What we can do is add small touches like I did. So for example, I added this bird flock I found on video blocks. And to be able to use that, I tracked the tower, the original tower. So we can do it right now. Let's create a new object, rename it track, click track motion, add the rotation as well. Choose target, track, track forward. It lost the track for a split second. So let's get back and go. Let's also change in options to stop tracking and adapt feature. Go frame by frame. We can increase the search region. Slightly drifts off. Can increase the search region. And, and I think we're done. We don't need to fix this track anymore. So let's apply our track. Let's show our flock of birds. I'm going to move the anchor point to the bottom, right bottom corner to animate the scale, because at first I want it to be at 0%. After a few frames, I want it to be, let's say 25. Let's parent our flock to the tracker, see if it sticks. Yeah, that looks good. But we want it to start after she flicks, so about here. I forgot to set the keyframes for the scale, so once again, 0, 25. Let's use the easy ease in. And obviously now we have to key out our flock. I use the key light for this. No need for anything complicated. You can see that there are some black edges so you can clip black. I wanna boost a little bit of the alpha of our birds because I did it before and I know they get kind of lost. So let's use curves. Select the alpha channel and let's boost the alpha, as you can see, before and after. And now to match the blur, use the Gaussian blur. Let's say, whoa, that's too much. I think about 35 is just fine. Actually, we have a real bird here for reference, so that's quite fortunate. So we can match it. I think we're pretty spot on. Awesome. So let's see how it looks like. They are scaling a little too quickly. Awesome. And one more thing I added is debris. So this footage. So let's bring it to our composition. Rotate it slightly. I'm going to move it behind our tower so it gets covered. So first let's add the Gaussian blur, obviously. I'm going to add the tint effect to match the footage and I'm going to map the black for this color. I guess, yeah, a little brownish. Yeah, that's perfect. Let's parent it to our track. See how it looks. Boom. That's awesome. And right about here. I know they are not tracked from here, but they are really not visible at this point. We can move them manually for the last frame to keep it out of sight. Hey, I'm gonna take a picture, so present like you're going to flick the tower, right? Hold on. Hold. <laughs> As you can see, there was some polishing to do, but basic idea was really simple. I hope you already have some ideas on how to incorporate that in your work, but for now, this is it. 
Thanks guys for watching. As a reminder, I have an upcoming course. It's really close to being finished. Meanwhile, there is a link in the description below to sign up for the list and you'll get a free lesson for that as well. Hit me up with any questions you may have and I'll see you in the next one.